Hey there, everybody. How are you all doing today? We have, I guess, part two of the 100 maps farming session that is going to be on Mausoleum. I just came out with a series last video, and I think it went over quite well. Got quite good reception on essentially a no investment, virtually no investment strategy. Almost completely self-sustaining. Well, I want to take that strategy and put it up a notch, I guess, and be a little bit more intelligent about the strategy behind it. Uh, this time, we're going to go through the trouble of adding sextants to the strategy. Nothing crazy, uh, still essentially the same strategy that focuses on Searing Exarch on Mausoleum with altars that cannot spawn with the boss in mind, because that's what's special about the Mausoleum map. Still going to be using Rusted uh, Scarabs here, and we're going to focus a little more on rolling the maps, and we're going to include Valorbs this time. Uh, do be careful though, sometimes they can brick into a, uh, a particular modifier you can't handle, uh, in which case you might want to save the map back or trash it or sell it or what have you. Uh, let's get into the strategy here, which again is basically the same thing. It's once again grand design, still got strong box there, still got shrines, still got uh, essence, but these take a back seat to the primary farm, which is Searing Exarch alter rewards which is uh, you know, a little bit on divination cards but primarily uh, just raw currency map uh, map materials things like that there was one change i did here i did drop secret stash so there was a couple points there and i dropped one of the map mods that gave me five extra points which meant i could go down and collect seance so i think you know what that means if we're doing seance that means we're running the additional gilded scarab section now this thing clocks in about 40 chaos apiece but essentially, there is no Gilded Scarab this league that is worth less than like 5 or 6 Chaos in bulk uh, because of the Growing Horde's pack size node. So every single Gilded Scarab has some value. I mean, they all used to anyway because you could swap Scarabs around through the Harvest Recrafts and whatever. But uh, this league in particular... Um, Random Gilded Scarab, even a Gilded Shaper Scarab is worth like 5 Chaos a piece this league. Okay, and then we're also going to be, you might have anticipated this, running the Sextant for an extra Essence. This is going to have some pretty big value right now because we cannot put Essence on the map device. So going from 1 Guaranteed Essence to 2 Guaranteed Essences, and especially having a 50% chance for a Remnant of Corruption, which are, my goodness, like over 2 Chaos a piece now, uh, is really going to put Essence on the map. No pun intended, uh, in terms of how much currency uh, we get there. Here's another sneaky little compass that is going to add a huge amount of value. People very much underestimate the value of this compass uh, in conjunction with a strategy like this. Magic pack size really has no... It's honestly a terrible compass choice for virtually all strategies. This strategy right here, especially one that focuses on altar minion spawns, Check it out. If you haven't noticed, uh, when you spawn Eldritch minions, a lot of them are pure magic packs. A lot of them are. And again, those can drop maps, so this really is going to help with map sustain as well. But of course, the main reason to use this is just simply supercharge the pack size of the uh, minion spawns. And so we're going to get way, way more monsters, just, just dramatically increasing the chance that we get more altar spawns. So instead of maybe an average of three or four altars, we're going to see closer to an average of four or five altars on each of these maps, I think, uh, especially because the average pack size in the maps can be much higher. Once again, every single map here is 85% or sorry, 25% uh, pack size or higher. Uh, a lot of them are eight mod corrupted because I vowed them. A lot of them turned unidentified. Now, unidentified are probably probably the most premium maps you could possibly run because if you run an elevated increased pack size in your unidentified maps, holy cow, that's so much additional pack size. You may remember last from the last set, before I even counted the maps, or the compasses for that matter, uh, we're, we're looking at 70% pack size. It's going to be 69% in this case because I did lose one notable. Uh, but now we're going to add 25% for, for free just from the compass. And then we're going to get 30% from magic pack spawns on top of that. And some of these spawns are going to be over 150% increased pack size. Some of them. Uh, the maps in general will go from being around 90 to 100% pack size to being around 100 to 120% pack size on the high end when, we, when we're either using this uh, sextant or running 8 mod corrupted. A lot of the maps are not 8 mod corrupted, but they're still... 
This is a very nice selection of premium map. Definitely far more premium than the maps we had uh, in the last set. And again, this is what it looks like to take this strategy a little bit more seriously. And I definitely do recommend doing this if you're least willing to settle uh, for spending a little bit of time on trade and bulk buying some of the compasses. It's quite easy, especially right now early on in the league. People have all of these compasses in massive bulk quantity. The Gilded Scarab compass can be a little bit hard to buy in, in huge bulk quantity, but the, all the other ones are, are very easy. I, I forgot to mention that Strongbox Corrupt and Rare is also included on here. That one's really not supremely valuable, but it is going to, to mean more operative strong boxes, more scarab, and it's going to at least marginally increase the chance of getting like a double divine orb drop uh, from, you know, backup cash or, or something like that. Okay. Oh, yeah. And also, um, strong box monsters receive a direct benefit from the increased pack size, too. So we're just going to see an absolute outrageous number of monsters spawn from the strong boxes. No, but there is no divination card farming on uh, Mausoleum on this map. Uh, so, anyway, again, four random assortments of scarabs. And these are all very cheap scarabs. Now, I'll prove it to you right here, right now, with the usual setup. Uh, we'll take a snapshot, show everything that's in there. Now, I do not have included the currency to make up for the compass and stuff. I'm actually not floating really any currency right now. Uh, so what I had to do is just had to input it in manually. There's roughly eight divine orbs worth of compasses for 100 maps there, uh, as well as uh, a little bit extra thrown in for the, uh, rolling the maps, just so you're aware. But you can see they're all right here. Mausoleum is going up in price a little bit. I wonder why. <laughs> must have some dastardly streamer must have made a video about it, I guess. And uh, let's see. Then we got all the... Look Look at this. I mean, these are all two-thirds of a chaos. And that's about right. I mean, honestly, you buy these in bulk. I mean, you're going to pay around 0.7 uh, chaos per scarab. So it's really nice, super easy to get all of these scarabs in bulk quantity. 3.18 divides, but in grand total, counting the compasses and uh, the startup cost here, we're looking at around 11.25 divines. Uh, and, and this is with a divine to chaos ratio of 233 to 1. So I don't know what it's going to look like in you know the future of the league, but this is shaping up to be one of the most, the highest disparity uh, ratios between chaos and divine or chaos and exalt in the history of all that. Um, Maybe we're going to have to run Eater of World Alters at some point uh, if it just keeps on going out of control. But here we go. I think this is going to be a nice little case study for you guys to see a very simple comparison in a nice sample size. 100 maps of just absolute baseline strategy where you're just focusing on um, trying to self-sustain a strategy and you're not investing hardly anything into it. And then upscaling it just a hair. Just, I mean, nothing crazy. Just adding some compasses on it, being intelligent about the compasses, being intelligent about how you're rolling in the map. And, you know, if you recall, last uh, video I made was around five divines an hour. I think you can get to see that this is pretty clearly going to be more, and we're going to find out just how much more it is. So let's get started. We're still going to be running maps exactly the same way as we were before. I should go ahead and mention here, I am throwing a headhunter on here, so I obviously am going to be a little bit more powerful, a little bit stronger, a little bit faster. However, I will say, uh, because I'm running a chaos damage build ability, headhunter does not play much role at all. Very, very little in terms of increasing my uh, efficiency. The, the increased speed occasionally from stealing a haste buff is going to be um, about the only thing that really increases. And I... But I will have more survivability. I'll definitely have more survivability. So that will be a change there. We're still going to be leveling uh, enhanced supports. Actually, on all three of these. So I'll probably walk away with nine enhanced supports uh, leveled. And, uh, oops. I actually messed that up here. I, I took the wrong sextant out. Let me fix that. I like keeping things highly organized. <laughs> In case you can't tell. We're going to start with an 8 mod corrupted map. Alright, now we're all set. S Searing Exarch. Should walk away with 4 invitations this time, I think. Fortune favors the brave. And there they all are. Alright. Let's see what the pack size is on this map. Ah. 
109%. Not too bad. Now, evidently, the... Oh, I didn't even realize this, but I have the wrong flask on. I was running a no-regen map earlier, so uh, i to fix that right quick. <laughs> I now have a divination distillate. I have changed my build a little bit. The POB is listed uh, down below. I am doing, actually, a fair bit more damage than I was before, and it's on account of... Um, correcting the links to basically committing to uh, a caustic arrow setup so you are gonna see more damage I don't want you guys to think it's just, you know just a headhunter that is causing more damage I am gonna be doing a fair bit more damage on account of using the right links in my main ability this time looks like we had a currency conversion that unfortunately did not uh, result and I wasn't even using the divination distillate <laughs> yet so uh, that's too bad all right, so we're starting this map off. Already had kind of a goofy start. Uh, not seeing any altars yet. That's what I really care about. Seeing a few conversions, though. All right, here we got our first essence. And it's nothing special. But we are going to see... Oh, we've already seen all the gilded scarabs. I did get a gilded reliquary scarab, but I guess it's not worth as much these days. But you can see this build's looking pretty nice here. Now, I took enkindling orbs off my loot filter, so I'm actually going to be picking up a fair bit less and going faster because of the loot filter change. I no longer have enkindling orbs uh, and a few other things on my loot filter. Let's see, uh, cartographer chisels. I did mention that at the end of the video last time. Not going to be doing this breach. It's not worth it. Finally, uh, an altar that's worth something here. Awaken Sextant, so that's good to see. So a lot of maps we do, we're going to get a few altars. We're not really going to get anything significant, but I'm still going to walk away with three Gilded Scarabs. I'm still going to walk away with some uh, essences. Well, that was an unfortunate result. actually lost money there. Was hoping for the conversion there. But you can see the maps are definitely fast. And it, it, it's still, I mean, just an easy breezy get in and out of the map is ASAP. Another currency conversion. Wow, that's weird. For the record, I very rarely see the Divine Orbs. With these uh, Wormstein gloves, I typically just try to corrupt them, and I guess I did hit something of some value there. I just lost a couple chaos orbs because <laughs> I forgot to swap that over. Oh, somebody's saying they, they dropped four divines and five results from a currency conversion. That's I haven't heard I haven't heard of results like that. Not often anyway. Here we go, map number two. So fun. There's a remnant of corruption. Okay, Val Caustic Arrow just absolutely rips it down. Yeah, you, you can see I'm doing a lot more damage uh, than I was last time. Divination card chance to drop a map can be a few different things. Sometimes a value like Putrid Cloister uh, Divination card can come up there. Apparently that's a highly valuable map this league. <laughs> Far be it for me to know why. There's an altar. Oh, altar spawning now. Let's see. I guess this is going to be a divination card. I got unique jewelry here. That can be a good one. Instilling orbs. Instilling orbs I do still have on my loot filter, so I'll go ahead and take that. So there. Oh, here we go. We got chaos orbs. This is going to be a much better map. The landing. All right. Yeah, corrupted beachhead map. I think that'll be worth at least a little bit. I do still have this on my... I should probably take the glass floors baubles off my loot filter, honestly. But they're still on for now. I'll go ahead and take this one here. I got a lot of altars right off the bat. Greater Eldritch Embers. Chance to reward unique map. All right. This is uh, this is shaping up to be a pretty good map because I'm getting, you know, better luck on the altar spawns. It's right and left here. Um, yeah, that's still not all that great. All right, this is actually becoming a little... In, in the event that I just get some crazy number of altar spawns, I will actually just abandon trying to loot the map 
uh, as I go because it's just too much. I, I'm going to lose Rampage. I'm going to lose Headhunter buffs. I should honestly just uh, kind of go through and just full clear it at this point. There's just too much stuff dropping uh, to try and pick things up on the go. And I'll just do the circuit, you know, this figure eight circuit one more time. Uh, in the end, loot everything. So we are also facing a server restart that is happening. I decided I'd go ahead and start this off. I'll have to pause the runs. We're not going to be able to, you know, run very many runs here uh, in a row. And then I'll just have to pick it up. Pick up <laughs> where I left off when I come back, I guess. Okay, so that was all of that map, and now I'm going to go get my loot. You see, one of the reasons I want to... Oh, I've got chilled ground. So I'm actually... Grand Elder Chambers and Orbs of Unmaking. Okay, and Scarab Dupes. So we may get some lucky Scarab Dupes going on here in the beginning. There it is. There's a duped Gilded Reliquary Scarab. Like I said, that's what I... And a duped Gilded Metamorph. So I didn't mention this in the intro, but if you get the Scarab Dupe uh, altar immediately, you can actually duplicate some of the first three Gilded you get and you actually get more than just three you can really crank up the value of that sexton you know um possessed the first three possessed monsters drop a gilded scarab so i'm gonna get at least five gilded scarabs in this set. i actually got six all three of them duped very lucky well, i have more scarab dupe chance but i don't care about it now because i dropped the other ones already so check that out that's pretty awesome Oh, good. Awakened Sextant. I probably, yeah, I guess Awakened Sextant would be even better than any other options there. And Chaos Orbs. Oh, this is a very nice map indeed. What a map this is going to be. Like what Val Caustic Arrow does to a strong box. You open it. You don't even see the monsters spawn. They just instantly dead. Really? Yeah, 200k is not going to be good enough. You should be running Toxic Rain if you only have 200k uh, Caustic Arrow damage. You probably want at least a level 26 uh, primary skill gem before you even really think about switching to Caustic Arrow. That would be my recommendation. I, I think Toxic Range is too good otherwise. So I switched to Caustic Arrow. It's not like Toxic Rain got bad or anything. It just doesn't have quite the clear as Caustic Arrow. So Caustic Arrow is way better clear. But it's not like Toxic Rain is bad at clear. It's just inferior, but it's way more damage, way more damage than Caustic Arrow. Red Star, what? The feet. I must have hit the uh, altar for corrupted currency. Well, last time we did not hit a jackpot drop. This time we did. That's uh, that that's a major pog. 
Major pog. Running juice here maps does help. <laughs> Any chances of that? Oh my goodness, that feels nice. I really, I haven't had a major drop in a really long time, honestly. Um, and this strategy does not lend itself to giving, giving you major drops, but it can still happen. This is a fiend card. It's worth eight. Actually, it says eight and a half, but it's really worth at least nine divines. GGG, we trust. Oh. All right. Hey. Oh my God! I upgraded a God Touched Essence. Ah. 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 Oh no! Oh no! It's full of rage, deafening rage. Yeah, that was actually pretty easy. back into that as it exploded. Yeah, unfortunately, poison builds, uh, I do not shatter monsters, and they can have corpse explosions and freaking porcupines and stuff, which actually spawn naturally on this map for some reason. What's the goal you have? What? So what's the goal since you have a fat mapping HX thing set up well, the goal is to get stronger, get faster, and get magic find. Caustic Arrow and Headhunter do not go well together. There's no, there's hardly any synergies there at all. So uh, this is a, we're sort of, I'm sort of at an intermediary point in the build. We're swapping to Tornado Shot with Champion, and then even, well, I don't know why I put the portal down. Uh, swapping to magic find variants too. I think I'm going to start with omniscience though. I, I don't know. I'm not even 100% sure I'm going to try a uh, corrupted strangle gasp setup. I don't know. Maybe. This league, I mean. Wow. Chaos and Grand Eldritch immediately. Oh. Oh. Nice. Very nice. Switch my gem leveling. Yeah. I think I'll just leave my level where it is. So you can see it. I 
This looks like a good time to pick up loot. This is where Caustic Arrow really, really excels. Just like... <laughs> pick up loot and just leave puddles all over the ground and everything. all the minions just die. Not that they have really any chance of dropping anything. But I don't know, it could happen, I guess. My goodness. That's a lot. Have I tried Sanctum yet? Nope. Busy. Too busy. Some pretty good loot. I can't do this just yet. Time to delve. Yeah. All right, got some findings for you all. It is time to check the results. I have the dump tab A here with a whole bunch of stuff included, like a six linked Valve Regalia, which is a curious drop, which actually is not even included in the final findings, I realized. And a dump tab B over here. I think there's like only one unique item that was worth anything really at all, and that is Maloney's mechanism, about 20 chaos. Kind of expected, we're not really magic finding anything crazy, although I am wearing a Ventor's Gamble and have a Suffix Rarity and a Divination Distillate on now, so I mean, <laughs> I would, maybe, maybe, you know, find some uniques. Anyway, no major unique drops there. Let's get into everything. First, I will uh, mention here, I was able to level not six, but nine enhanced supports. Was able to, honestly, I probably, if I had pay paid more attention to this, I might have been able to level... Uh, two full sets of six uh, in the offhand bow here, but uh, I kind of forgot about it for a while. Uh, I'm going to be giving myself two and a half divines. It looks like fully leveling these from one to three, val-orbing them or not with the odds and everything, it looks like there's about two and a half divines of value uh, in that with nine gems uh, in total. And that's the only sort of bonus uh, that we're going to give here. You may have seen that a fiend dropped... Yes, a fiend of all things. Uh, let's see if I can get it to pull up. Hey, there it is. <laughs> Only uh, 2,141 chaos. No big deal. Uh, apparently, that's like nine divines. So we're going to check the results with the fiend and without. Also, uh, disclaimer here, this is actually take two. At first take, I didn't realize this until I was completely done doing it, but awakened sections were some reason completely inaccurately represented in here and then um, also there's the issue of the gilded scarab so we use the uh, gilded scarabs drop from possessed monsters up to three in a map um, we're farming those because uh, they're actually worth quite a bit with you can use gilded scarabs in growing hordes you can use gilded scarabs to swap them out for different things uh, if you want and Unfortunately, the market, as many of you are aware, is quite inaccurate with excellence determining or awakened PoE determining uh, the value of Gilded Scarabs. Really, almost any Gilded Scarab is m at least moderately undervalued. Uh, and since I was using Rusted Scarabs as a strategy, which were pretty accurately represented in the pricing, I was actually farming, target farming Gilded Scarabs. Uh, I'm not going to settle for just letting excellence completely undercut me there. Uh, so, what I'm going to do is, oh, that was, uh, anyway, uh, what I'm going to do is manually up, or, or increase them to five chaos a piece in value. Uh, because if you go on trade and you try to, you personally try to purchase uh, a whole bunch of, of Gilded Scarabs, I promise you, uh, unless you get extraordinarily lucky, and find a malfunctioning trade bot or something, you're not going to successfully uh, buy, for example, gilded sulfite scarabs at two chaos apiece. It's not happening. <laughs> so, uh, I, I personally have tried to buy scarabs, or have been buying scarabs, polished, gilded, you know, uh, for multiple leagues now, and this league, and things are looking like they're only going up from here. So, if you can, if you can even get them at five chaos apiece, consider yourself fairly lucky. Uh, actually, so that is the state of 
the scarab situation. So I just want you to all know that that was changed over. Let's get into the calculation now. 11.25 divines to start with. Uh, so 40 chaos gilded scarabs sextant definitely cranked up uh, the cost. And if you take three times four, well, let's do that. Three times five times four, rather. So th three scarabs times four maps times five chaos apiece. You'll see that absolute baseline bottom value that I'm going to walk away with. And this is assuming I don't duplicate any scarabs that I get nothing but the lowest quality scarabs. I'm going to walk away with 60 chaos in value. So I pay 40 chaos for the compass. I walk away with 60 chaos for the value. That seems okay. It actually doesn't seem that great to me because you're losing the section slot too. Uh, but it's okay. You know, and sometimes you are going to get gilded divination, gilded um, ambush and what, whatnot. All right. So that is just kind of shedding some extra light there on that. Here it is. 42. One last time to make sure. 42.04 plus 2.5, so that is for gem leveling, and we're going to take this minus 11.25. Oh, sorry, I skipped the uh, gross number. Uh, and then per hour, so this was about four and a half. Oops, I hit the wrong button. Four and a half hours to do all this, which is pretty fast, obviously. That's less than three minutes per map. Uh, so it was pretty easy to get in and out of the map in under three minutes unless I had a really good juicy map and I actually had to loot a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, there it is. So 7.39 divines per hour. Now if you, if you had asked me what I thought the divines per hour was going to be, I would have guessed honestly around this. Like 6, 7, maybe 8. Uh, but as you can see, the fiend is pulling this number up dramatically. I didn't really get that much. You can't count on a fiend card. Uh, dropping in 100 maps. It's uh, kind of ridiculous. But I do think, you know, 100 maps with this pack size, it is going to happen. You know, that that kind of uh, card is going to show up because it it was pulled from the... That card is a result of what we were target farming. We we're target farming altars, mi Eldritch Minion altars, and that was an Eldritch Minion altar reward, uh, believe it or not. So... Um, but, again, extremely rare. The weighting is very low. Uh, so, can't really count on it. But what we can count on is getting three exalted orbs and no divine orbs. <laughs> you can always count on something like that happening. So, we're going to now check the value of, <laughs> of everything without the fiend card. And if I go through here, and especially, again, if I remove this card... I'm going to remove this card here. I'm going to show you uh, what kind of currency was made in this session without that card. Because it's going to be, you know, a fair bit less. Waiting for it here. Okay. Now, uh, just looking at this, it, it, it's not a very pretty picture. I... Maybe I did get a bit lucky with Awakened Sextant, I don't know, but the fact that the Incandescent Invitation is practically on the very top, and the maps, <laughs> Mausoleum maps are on the top, that's a really bad sign. That means, you know, clearly I didn't get, like, really hardly anything, uh, any notable drops, anything of particular value here. Grand Elder Chambers uh, was much less than the last time. So, all in all, I mean, the luck kind of averages out, but it looks like it was a bit less than uh, last time. Especially considering these were much juicier maps than the last time. At least, moderately. Moderately so. So, we're going to take this number, this new number, plus 2.5. Okay, that's going to be our gross number. We're going to put some new numbers in here. Minus... Oh, oops. I think it was 11.25. <laughs> I hope I got that right. It was 11 point something. Uh, 24.42. Okay, and now we're going to take this divided by four and a half hours again. This is about as fast as you're probably going to run, and that's awfully close to what I got last time. That's a little bit better, but I don't know. I'm a little bit disappointed, to be honest. I think uh, with decent RNG, I... 
on an average, I would probably get more than six divines an hour. I, I have to think. I mean, if I, if I got five, four to five uh, last time, this is at least five to six. Or probably more like five to seven. Uh, maybe a little bit wider window here. I did get actually get seven with the Fiend card. We'll probably call this five to seven uh, divines an hour. So, I don't know. The Kind of pretty close to what we're expecting. Maybe a, a lackluster session this time, but... I was expecting a little bit more currency per hour. It kind of did get a little bit more currency per hour. And that is, you know, that's the result. They are what they are. I think, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty satisfied with that. We'll just kind of leave it there. And let me talk about my final thoughts, I guess, final thoughts. So I have been considering or contemplating, potentially... Running this similar strategy with Harvest. Now, the Harvest nodes are a little bit out of the way, but I do remember running Grand Design with Harvest last time. Now, Harvest has some new nodes. The stuff way over here, I don't know. I mean, I feel like I would have to adjust my tree quite a bit. Uh, but I'm going to do a little bit of research, see if Grand Design is good. Maybe not. Uh, especially if it lo there looks like there's a decent Harvest Grand Design strategy that's still uh, acceptable. I may try this out because I'm a little curious, you know, going taking it all the way with Grand Design uh, Harvest and uh, growing hordes could be an interesting uh, thing to see the results on that. I got to thinking, you know, expedition you can't really do not reliably with growing hordes because you're not putting, you're not forcing expedition on the map via sextant. You're doing it via scarab and if you're using growing hordes, you don't get that anymore. Uh, but with Harvest, however, you are forcing it assuming you're forcing it you're forcing it via sextant and so the scarabs aren't don't play a role there so with a growing hordes grand design strategy harvest is the only viable option there and so i am gonna do a little bit of research kind of see if that's a possibility if it's not you know we'll just scrap it but if it is then that'll be kind of part three the final part uh to this series some people might be asking if Eater of Worlds could potentially be a better option. You know, the Divine Orb keeps going up more and more and more. I do need to check and see or verify some things with the spawn chance of altars. I know it's supposedly 0.08%. Chance, I have asked around. I haven't really gotten an answer. So if any of you uh, really, really smart viewers uh, know the details, please let, please let me, the community, know if 0.08% chance to spawn the altar, if that refers exclusively to the minion altar or if it is all encompassing a minion and boss altar because that kind of has serious ramifications uh, in terms of how often the altar would spawn i know it's something like one in a thousand but i actually want to know exactly what what the percentage chance is based on it. so uh gotta figure that out still maybe by the time i post this video i'll already know <laughs> i don't know but it's good to let the community know so there it is that's the final tree and um, it's still, you know, pretty easy going strategy, just adding some compasses and just, just valleying the maps. I think, I think valleying the maps is honestly worth doing, whether you do the compass strategy or not. You're definitely going to improve your map sustain. It'll bring it up from almost sustaining to actually completely sustaining it, uh, in most cases. So, anyway, that is all for this video. I'm just going to come back and, uh, figure out what I'm going to do next. Again, it'll either be harvest or not. Might go back to strong box farming. I'm not sure, but uh, more farming videos are coming. I, I have a few ideas for a couple of other videos. Some people have shown interest in this build. <laughs> I don't know. It, it, it behooves me to make a video about this build. I, it, it was completely... I don't know. It just completely escaped me. I never even thought about doing it. I made the video preemptively about toxic rain, but you know, people are watching me in the in the chat and the Twitch, and uh, I'm constantly getting questions about uh, caustic arrow, caustic arrow versus toxic rain. You know, when, is caustic arrow more viable? Is it not? When is it more viable? You know, how much damage do you need? Uh, what is Val caustic arrow like? You know, a lot of people have already made some videos about this, but. Uh, I don't know. Maybe maybe it does warrant it because even I'm a little bit surprised at just how efficient this character is. It's very efficient <laughs> in the farm I was, at least in the farm I was doing. I wouldn't suggest doing this as any kind of deli orb farming probably, but uh, just kind of baseline Alk and Ghost stuff. Wow, this, this strategy is really, or this build is really, really something. Something to behold. All right. Appreciate you guys uh, checking in. Uh, I'll see you around the next video, okay? Bye.